Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the webinar, Best Practice Trail Auditing Using Digital Platforms. My name is Candace Gallagher, and I am the Director of Operations and Webinar Coordinator for American Trails. This is our 185th webinar in the American Trails Advancing Trails webinar series. And this webinar is free uh, thanks to a generous sponsorship from Maine Recreational Trails Program Advisory Committee. And this free webinar is being recorded. It includes real-time closed captioning in English and also offers free learning credits. And links uh, for the closed captioning and the learning credit quiz will be in the chat box if you don't already see it there. Um, and it will be there soon again, I promise. Um, attendees will also receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording, the transcript, resources slide with the presenter emails, as well as learning credit details um, within two days. And we are saving time for attendee questions at the end of the webinar, but we do welcome you to send your questions at any time um, during today's presentation. Um, uh, via the Q&A icon that you'll see at the bottom of your screen, and the presenters will try their best to answer as many questions um, during the webinar um, today. And I would like to thank our um, additional partners of the webinar that include the Bureau of Land Management, the Federal Highway Administration, the U.S. Forest Service, as well as the National Park Service. Um, and today's presenters, which I'm happy to introduce, we have Craig uh, Minicky, the director with Trail Vision, and we also have Alan Gould, sorry, Alan Gould, <laughs> with CEO with Trail Vision. So I will now have Craig um, take control and start today's uh, presentation. Awesome. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, thank you much, uh, very much, Candice, and um, for the, uh, those kind words about us. And thank you to American Trials for the opportunity to come on and, and present this morning. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, and thanks for taking the time out of your day. Uh, everyone's busy this, uh, this time of year, so it's really much appreciated. So myself and Alan, uh, as Candice says, we're coming to you from Australia. So we're in Brisbane on the East Coast, so it's 4 a.m. in the morning. So uh, have to forgive us if we're a little bit rusty until the coffee kicks in. Um, so yeah, just a, bit, a little bit more about myself, I suppose, before I launch into the into the presentation slide. So I wear a few hats in the mountain biking industry here in Australia. So uh, yeah, I'm a founder of, of Trail Vision, the digital platform we'll be looking at today. Also founder of, of um, Blue Sky Trails, which is a trail consulting uh, company here in Brisbane. So we do a lot of auditing, trail, um, trail planning, trail consulting. Uh, and we also do a lot of client side project management. So we're currently managing about $11 million worth of trials here in, in Australia. Um, we're passionate about trials, uh, been in the trials industry for a long time. And that's a part of the reason behind why we built Trial Vision um, to help people like yourselves on this call to actually improve how we manage trials uh, across the world. So best practice trial auditing using digital platforms. Um, let's get into it, I suppose. Before I get in, I, I, I love this photo that I always put this photo in my slide. Uh, it's from Noosa, uh, which is about two hours north uh, here in Brisbane. Beautiful part of the world. Um, lovely little tourist town. It's got an awesome national park with all these uh, beautiful trails through it. So the one thing about trail auditing is you get out to see some really cool places and um, yeah, you get paid to do it, which is, which is awesome. So where we're we going today, uh, what we'll be looking at, uh, go over a bit of the background of, of where I've been in my trail auditing journey. And then also- Hey, Craig, I just want to make sure, do you have the it in presentation mode? I'm still uh, seeing the notes okay, or the, so the individual slides on the left. Just want to make sure. Yeah, it should be in presentation mode. Sorry. Just need to swap screen. There, okay. And then click the display settings. There we go. So that's better? Yes, perfect, thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, what we're looking at today, a uh, bit of an auditing background uh, for myself and, and the evolution of trial vision. Get into what uh, we consider best practice trial auditing to be, what processes we use to develop and, and um, undertake really good quality audits in the field. How we get into that leveraging your, your audits once you've once you've completed them, you've collected that data, 
using the technology out on the trails. And we'll do a, do a demonstration. I'll we'll get into the demonstration later on, and then we'll, we'll book you a spot on our trail tour too to America later in the year. Um, so the background of, of trail auditing and trail vision. So I've been auditing trails for around 10 years now, a um, bunch of different types of trails. I specialise, I suppose, in mountain biking trails, but also walking trails and a few other types of trails here. I was always frustrated. I'd do a day in the field and then I'd come back and it'd be two or three days in the office. So I'd be pulling photos together and GPS files together and putting it into a Word document or whatever. And I thought sort of, there had to be a better way. Um, so I went back and I worked with another colleague of mine and we pulled together a few different open source platforms and we came up with a bit of a Frankenstein version of, of some software that um, that worked for us, but didn't, didn't, uh, no one else could use it. It was internal essentially. So Alan and I worked together to build Trail Vision, which is an enterprise level uh, trail management software and really takes that trail auditing to, to the next level. And we look at trails as assets. So where you need to collect, analyze and present data uh, to demonstrate your outcomes that you need. Trails should be viewed as, as any other outcome, uh, any other asset, uh, whether it's a footpath, a football stadium or whatever. Once it's recognized as an asset, then you, you can get your maintenance funding uh, applied to that. So here's our vision for trial vision. I'm just going to do this. Um, yeah, we want to change the way trials around the world are built and managed. Um, so, and our platform is really built for, for everyone that's on this on this webinar this morning and to empower you to, to get out there and collect the data, to create those world-class trial experiences um, that improve not only the trials, but improve the, the experiences for, for people on the trials, which is the ultimate reason why we build trials. Um, yes, yep. so why do we audit trials uh, in the first place? Um, as everything in life, um, you can't improve what you don't measure. So if you don't have a baseline for your trail, you can't actually understand whether you're, you're improving, whether you're going backwards or how, how fast uh, the damage is happening to your trial, how many people are using your trail and, and what the actual end game is for for a point in time where you need to do some maintenance on that trail. We'll get into that a little bit later in the presentation. While audits are a snapshot in time, they, they're really representative of what you're seeing on the trail uh, at that point in time. Over time, when you're getting out there and you're doing inspections, you're doing audits, you're building up that data bank and you, you're seeing trends emerge over time. Um, they're a crisp, critical uh, risk mitigation strategy. Uh, so that's not just for land managers or trial managers, understanding their risks of, of the trials themselves. Also for trial builders, understanding that, um, you know, when the defects liability or, or if they're building a trial, they know what the trial looked like when they left, um, and when, when they open that trial. And if something happens on that trial down the track, they have that um, record of what the trial looked like when they finished. Um, Auditing is that key data collection process for asset management. So it's the basis of, of what's on the ground, what, what's, what's real uh, on the ground. And once you start to build up that data bank, you get that justification for capital operations and maintenance budgets, uh, which I don't know, uh, here in Australia, we, we uh, sometimes we're very good at building trails. We're not so good at maintaining trails. So there's a lot of uh, issues there actually getting that funding in the back end. And obviously the ultimate is improving that user experience across your trial network to provide really good trails, provide whether it's that high-end mountain biking, tough, gnarly sort of experience or the nice green um, experience for, for people just entering into the, into the sport. Um, and improving that return on investment from your trails. So getting back to that, thinking of trails as assets and what's your ultimate ROI, whether that's from a social perspective or whether that's from an economic perspective. So we look at, um, we built out a, a trail asset management life cycle when we started um, trial vision. So essentially trial vision covers off on each of these, um, each of these stages of a trail life cycle um, and supports each one of these stages to collect data. Uh, today we're, we're focusing on the operational phase um, where, where the trail's been built, uh, it's been commissioned and it's running and we're, we're now looking at doing ongoing maintenance um, keep the trail in good, start, good shape. So best practice trail auditing. So this is, I guess, what we've built up over, over the years of doing it um, and, and getting those outcomes that we need. So all audits need to have a clearly defined purpose and outcomes. So 
we're not just going out there doing doing audits uh, willy nilly. We, we need to really understand what we're trying to what we're trying to collect, what we're trying to prove, what's the hypothesis that we're trying to do and, and justify with our with our audit. Um, they need to be standardised. So over time, you're collecting the same type of data, um, and and you can that then get allows you to. I'm hearing an echo, it. Craig. Are you hearing an echo? No, sorry, no echo for me. Um, I might stand a bit closer. Is that any better? Okay. Are you hearing it, Alan, or maybe it might just be me? No, no okay. I'm not it might just be me then. Okay. All good. All good. Um, so yeah, it needs to be standardized, same criteria. So when you're building up your collector forms, um, depending on what data you need to collect, you, you, you're, at, you're collecting the same same criteria every time you're going out on the trail, using the same method, same tools. So you're getting that repeatable process. You're getting that repeatable outcome from the audit. You can compare uh, what happened two years ago with what happened now. Again, the, the auditors need to be online with what you're trying to achieve. And then the auditors, if you're using multiple auditors in an audit, they need to be on the same page um, to have an understanding of, you, you, if you're looking at one feature, they're both going to assess it at the same time. And also understanding that quality auditing takes time. Um, so out there in the field, if you, if, if you really want to collect quality data, you need to put the effort in to, to, to get that. So here at Trial Vision, we talk about two types of, of auditing, point auditing and section auditing. So point auditing is a really detailed um, trail audits where you're going out and you're starting a trail and you're logging every point along that trail um, uh, to understand what's going on on that trail and, and to identify every drainage issue, every erosion issue, every safety issue along that trail. Um, when you do it at that level, you can then use that to develop scope of work for volunteers or contractors to package those, those uh, that work up into, into tenders or however you want to manage that. And then you can also get into some, um, into some metrics for your trail. So whether that's the number of issues per kilometre, number of drainage issues per kilometre, um, you know, those sort of metrics that you can get into when, you, when you're collecting data at this level. Um, your critical issues can be identified and addressed proactively. So um, you can bunch those critical issues together and, and get them out to the team to go out and address um, pretty much in real time. Uh, but once again, point auditing is time consuming, uh, but it does give you a really good um, healthy data set when you finish that, finish that audit. Whereas we look at section auditing, um, so this is where we're looking at sections of the trail or the whole trail um, rather than individual points. And the way we look at it, depending on the client we're working for, we'll either rate it on the average of the section, so the average condition of that section, whether it's poor, um, good, very good, or we look at it as the what's the worst um, point on that trail that, that's actually going to drive the rating for it. So it provides an overarching uh, trail condition, and that's that's really good for trend analysis when you're when you're looking at, at that over time, and it's much more um, time efficient. Um, you can actually do a lot more of these, um, do these more regularly, uh, whereas the point order thing is very time consuming. Uh, so I think we've got our first poll there, um, Candice. You see it? There yep. we go. And if you want to kind of talk as this is going through, Craig, too, just so there's not some. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, I'm about to close it actually pretty soon here because uh, we're almost at 80%. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Now, this poll question, I guess, is just to see um, how healthy and, and robust uh, people's management systems are around their trials. Um, I guess we see, see a variety of, and it, and it depends. Sometimes you don't need a really robust. Uh, trial management system in the back end. Okay, cool. So around 20% have got something in place. 
<laughs> I like the eight percent uh, that are honest and say it lives in a folder on the shelf, never looked at. Uh, and then cool, there's some uh, some work going on, which is really, really, really good to see that people are uh, are cracking on and starting to build that process out. So, all right, so we'll crack on now. So this is the trial audit process that we've developed over the years of trial auditing, and and found that it really gives us good good results. Um, as a, for our trials, uh, trial audits. Um, right, there we go. So the first step uh, that we come up with is going back there is that confirming that purpose of the audit. So what are you trying to capture? What are you trying to prove? What's a hypothesis you, you, you're trying to, trying to um, go out there and prove? So whether that's, a, I, I know I need more money for maintenance and I, and I think that there's, we have drainage issues on this trial, we're not doing enough work, or hey, um, we have conti we're continually having the same issue on this, this section of trial. Uh, we need it to be, we consider it needs to be realigned. We need to capture the data to be able to demonstrate that. Alternatively, also, is there an event that triggered the audit? So a rainfall event um, or a weather event, or has there been an injury on the trial that, that has caused it? Is it the first audit or has there been audits history before that'll, that'll guide um, what you do and how you do your audit. Is there a standard being assessed? So is it IMBA, are you using the IMBA guidelines that you need to measure against that? Is there a walking trial standard? Is there other trial standard that you're actually going out there and not only checking the, the classification of the trial, of the, the standard, the condition of the trial, but you're also comparing that against the classification or a, or a standard. And then once again, talking about, well, will a maintenance scope be developed at the end of, end of the audit? And if that is, then, then that'll guide how you actually set your audit up. So confirming your data collection requirements. So yeah, so basically what data do you need following the audit? What, what's your hypothesis? What do you need to prove that, that hypothesis? How much data do you really need? Um, you see some clients that, that tend to go overboard with collecting data and then once you're out there in the field and if you collect, if you're doing a, a hundred points in a day, you know, an extra two or three fields a hundred times over adds a lot of time and complexity to your audit. So really, being critical on what, what data you're actually going to collect. Going back and looking at that historic data exists, that's sort of, we, we do a whole, another whole presentation on data. Um, we won't get into too much into that today, but there is an art to, to data before and after. Um, how are you going to capture it? So are you going to use a digital platform? How are you going to use pen and paper? Is there something in between that you're going to do? And then how are you going to present the audit outcomes? So you start with that end in mind. How am I going to present this? Um, what's the format I'm going to look at? And then having that plan B for, for data capture if tech fails, we all know tech is awesome, but um, when you get out there in the middle of the bush, if it's not working, it's, it's not much fun. We then can pull a, a field work plan together. So uh, this is really the, the how. So we've looked at the, the why and the what, now we're into the how. So this is the logistics to get to the location. Where, where is the audit gonna happen? How do I get there? What's the team? Are we gonna walk the audit? Are we gonna ride it? Can we drive it? Uh, and that gives you that field time calculation to say, all right, we're going to need a couple of people for this to go and do it. It's going to take us two days, three days, whatever it is. Um, so then we take that, that that trial scope and break it down into logical pieces or trial segments um, that we can then um, assign to different auditors in the team. And then we look at it if we're doing gravity or if we're doing a point to point order, how are we best shuttle or, or get people from point to point uh, most effectively? E-bikes have been awesome for that, for what we do um, here in Southeast Queensland. You're then looking into the, the, the bit more uh, minutiae of things and convert, like looking at mobile coverage, addressing loan worker risks, and, and then doing that full safety risk assessment of, of where you are, you know, snake bites and, and heat and water and cold, um, just to make sure you've, you've got those mitigation strategies in place for your field work. Um, so we've done all that. Now we're looking at the who. So uh, we developed some some training materials for auditors to make, to bring them up to speed on 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 this process, and then also what we're looking at for in an audit and how to do it. We want to match our, our auditors to the audit scope. So if we've got a mountain bike specialist, we don't want them out auditing tra uh, horse trails or, or or rail trails or vice versa. So we're really matching the audit to the scope. We use a buddy system for inexperienced auditors, so they get them brings them up to speed. Um, with, with really experienced orders as they go. At this point here, the calibrating the audit methodology um, with the team. So often if we're going to do a new audit with a new team, 
we'll spend some time to go out before we go and do the real audit to go and actually look at a trial and calibrate within the team. If we're looking at a, at a jump or a feature, everyone is just going to assess it at the same time. Everyone's going to get the same outcomes out uh, from looking at that feature. And then after every audit, we make sure we debrief um, what we what worked, what didn't work, what can be improved. <clears throat> so then we get into the what. So what are we going to um, so the what tools? So what tools and equipment we do we need to do this audit? So going back, what data and capture method and platform you're going to use? That's a digital paper, something in between. GPS, uh, everything's GPS. We we tend to use aerials. Um, or we use our phone or, a, or an iPad or whatever, but then attach a GPS aerial, Bluetooth aerial or something to that, depending on, on the level of accuracy the, the, uh, the client wants. We usually get down to sort of the sub five meter accuracy with, with normal GPS areas, but then aerials, but then we also have a, a differential uh, GPS to get sub meter accurate where we need to. The old client we use that uh, extensively to, to measure your um, trail grades, basic tape measure. When you go going out in that, I'm not sure if they're called EFERBs in America, but essentially a, an emergency beacon uh, we have. If we're going out backcountry style, and then also just considering your PPE, safety equipment, and also your food, water, that sort of thing, depending on the, the climate you're going into. So then we're into the field capture. So um, we're really, one thing I'll make sure I've done, I'll learn the hard ways to actually test your equipment before you head out to location. So, Make sure your batteries are charged, make sure your equipment is working and uh, before you get out there. And uh, it's often a long way to drive back to start again. So it's important to follow the plan. You spent the time to come and come up with the, the methodology about how you're going to do the audit. Um, when you get out there to actually follow that, be really method methodical about how you do it, and how you do the audit. Quality over quantity, so take your time, don't rush it. Um, yeah, once again, escalate those critical issues. ASAP, we always have. Flagging tape with us to flag any safety issues or whatever in the field, but also it's important to, to, to bump that up the chain to get a crew out there to fix any safety issues or whatever uh, quickly. And then we do, we have a process where we check in with the, the team at the end of each trial. So it's just check in one for a safety reason. Hey, I'm going okay. We've got to the end of this trial, I'm going to the next one. But it's also, hey, I got to the end of this trial. Hey, we're coming across this issue on these trials a lot. Are you guys finding the same? How are you recording it? So you're just getting that data integrity and data quality uh, improved at the end of each trial. So basically, now we've finished the field work, we've collected everything. Now we're coming back uh, and we're we're analysing that data um, to see what it's telling us. So so we're collecting and reviewing all that data to make sure it's complete, to make sure nothing's been lost in the ether. And that's one of the things that we we um, we built double and triple things into trial vision to make sure data is not lost. Um, identify and address any data integrity issues. So what I'm talking about there is sort of discrepancies between team members just to, to smooth out those discrepancies. Um, you're collating that data into appropriate format for analysis. Um, and then you're going back to the what's the purpose of the audit? What data did you collect? Did it actually answer the question that I was that I was asking or, or is it answering another question or is it raising more question? Um, and then yeah, you're developing and formatting the, the audit outcomes. So that pie chart on the on the side there is a, an audit I did down in on the Gold Coast recently. And that's just a, a basic sort of breakdown of the issues per trial across the network. But we can uh, we can do, do, uh, dive deeper into that. So and look into you know what are the safety issues on the network, what are the critical issues on the network, what are the drainage issues on the network. So you can really drill down uh, in your data to understand really what's going on in your trial. Um, yeah, and then we get into the reporting. Um, so we've gone and done all the hard work now, and now we're presenting the data. So the reports really tell the story of of what you what you found when you did the audit. Um, so they clearly articulate the problem, and then also the solution. They identify trends, um, and and you can do that when you have that build up of data over years, when you can actually see something's happening in this section of trial. We're seeing the same. Uh, issue over and over again. We need to go out there and, and understand, do we need to realign that section? Is there a user problem on that section? Whatever whatever it is. So in trial vision, we have a couple of different levels of audits. So we have a snapshot audit for executives, uh, which just provides our high level, um, lots of charts and bar charts and stuff like that to identify those trends and some key metrics. 
about what's going on. And then we get into the, the detail like you see there on the screen for, for operators and field staff to understand, hey, this is the issue. We've got a problem with this berm. There's a, there's a problem there. The drainage on the inside needs to be fixed uh, and needs to be repaired. Um, so your reports are essentially building that compelling argument for funding or change on your trail. So, hey, I need X amount of dollars to go and fix this trail. Um, whether I need it now or whether I need it in six months' time, it's just being able to give you that understanding of, of where where you're at in the process. Um, and then you can all automate that reporting process as much as possible so you're not spending those two or three days um, out in the field um, collecting that data. And then obviously generating the reports from that data, sorry. Um, so Candice, I think we've got our second poll question there. Yeah, this is sort of just uh, getting an understanding of, of how often you do inspections and audits and um, whether you have a program in place or whether you're um, just sort of responsive to, to audits, uh, or to weather events or, or safety events or whatever. Schedule is really important to start to build up that that database uh, on your trails to make sure you're getting out there, out there quite regularly. See what's going on. Okay, we've got a bit of a spread there. Um, yeah, it's good to see there's some proactive stuff going on, um, but also a bit of opportunity. Um, so yeah, and that, yeah. I know that fourth one there that uh, a lot of organisations we work with struggle with resources to um, to implement a, a robust audit and inspection program. Uh, and I guess that's part of the reason for before we developed this product to, to streamline and make it easier um, to, to collect that data and, and analyse it and present it. Cool. And crack on. Um, so I guess this is sort of taking a little, extrapolating a little bit um, from, from the data. So we've developed something called the trail pulse. So this is essentially measuring the condition of your trail over time. And when you're getting out and doing audits and inspections, you can start to collect that data on your trail and you get an understanding of you know, your trail sort of ticking along and it's starting to degrade as, you, as trails do over time. Uh, this, this plot here was for a trail we have here in Southeast Queensland where um, February last year, this time last year, we had a pretty significant rainfall event um, and uh, we, we sort of yeah, had a lot of um, damage to our local trail networks. Um, so essentially we came along, um, that initial drop there, yeah, uh, the initial drop there was when we, um, the initial rain event, then we couldn't get out there to do any work because it was too wet, so it dropped off even further. So that was the initial point where we could have made a decision to do some work. Um, we couldn't get on the trail because it was too wet. So the trail condition dropped down to that. At that point, we had a bunch of volunteers uh, that we pulled together to get out and do some, some work on the trail. Uh, brought the trail back up to riding standard and you can see then the trail sort of ticked along for a while. Because trail, the volunteers were, were doing hand maintenance, were essentially just putting band-aids on some underlying issues. So then towards that 30 month point, um, trial condition dropped off um, significantly. And that's where we made the decision to go and uh, put a machine over the trail and, and repair it. Um, and then take it back to, to a very good condition. Um, I guess while we're talking about condition there, we also think about that as dollars. So, um, so it's also, you know, the cost to repair initially was a lot cheaper. However, um, doing it the way we did it there, getting volunteers out to do that at that interim step, bought us an extra 18 months or so. Um, it still costs more money, but you actually got that extra 18 months out of your out of your trial before you had to put a machine down the trail to actually fix it properly. Um, so this is a this is sort of uh, just giving you an understanding of, of what you can do with this trial data when you're out there collecting it, and then how you can use this pulse to actually predict, <coughs> excuse me, when you, when you're actually going to need to get out and do um, trial audits um, and then actually predict your maintenance in the future. All right. 
So then, and then I guess this photo here, this was um, this is a photo on a on a trail called Bovine Groove, um, down at a local network down south of Brisbane here, and that was some of the damage we saw after that February rain event. So it was significant. There's some very large boulders in that creek crossing previously, and we went back out there and they were just gone. So uh, significant rain event that um, yeah caused a lot of damage across southeast Queensland. So like we we're talking about in the poll. Um, routine audits inspections are critical developing that database that you can then make those informed management decisions based on. The way we tend to work with clients is uh, we have one third party audit per year. So third party being, it's not an auditor from within the organization and it's not an auditor that's necessarily associated with a, the trial construction or building company that you use, um, but they're, 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 they're independent. They go out and give you the, the nuts and bolts um, of, of what's going on in your trial. And then you either have monthly or fortnightly inspections by internal staff. And that's where you sort of, so third party audit would be your point based audit. You're getting out there and really doing that detailed audit. Your monthly inspections are more your section or trial length uh, audits. And then we have targeted um, audits post incident, so fire, weather event, or if there's been a, an injury on a trial to, to go out and see what's actually going on uh, and the reason for that. So what we're all talking about here today is that leverage technology um, and why why we created Trail Vision and how you can use it um, for your audits. Everyone in the trails industry is loves nature and loves being out in nature. Not a lot of us uh, really love computers and doing all this tech stuff. So well, we built this platform to make data capture easy um, so that you're spending as little time as possible um, capturing data in the field. It's really streamlined so um, you're not um, managing and massaging data, improving that data quality. So we use a lot of drop down menus. So you're not using uh, free text in your fields and stuff like that. So you're getting that data quality integrity it, it, and that simplifies analysis. You're comparing with apples with apples when you're, when you're getting back to your analysis. Um, heavy reliance on GPS or spatial trials are spatial. So you need to have that accuracy with your GPS and yeah, trail auditing is data heavy, especially if you're using photos. So um, and you need plenty of um, plenty of service space. Um, I think there was one more poll question for me. Um, what is this? Yeah, so sort of just uh, a um, understanding how you currently collect and present trial audit inspection data. Um, So we've used all of those um, over time uh, and probably everything except for the last one works to some extent. Sorry, Alan, I think I might have stolen one of your poll questions, mate. So. I'm just, I'm seeing some more questions or answers coming. That's why I'm kind of waiting to close it here real quick. It's That's that number good. keeps rising fast. <laughs> Very good. I'll see you good. Okay, I'm going to close it now. Yep. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that was, uh, that's probably the spread that we, we, we expected. Um, to be honest, I'm probably not the, the memory of word of mouth, but, um, yeah, they're piecing multiple technology and platforms together. That's um, that's a common thing we see uh, across across the industry, and a common frustration we see across the industry that um, yeah, people are frustrated having to deal with multiple platforms to to come up with good detailed audit reports to present data. So cool. Um, so that's. All right, so that's uh, my part of the presentation done. Uh, I guess, Candice, we can take a couple of questions if you have any there before we jump into Alan's presentation. Sure, and I do see Alan has been answering some along the way, so thank you so much. And I think the attendees should be able to see the answers to those questions as well. Um, let's go ahead and ask um, a question from Cosmo. How do you account for seasonal conditions when you perform an audit? Did you audit at the same time every year? Uh, yes, good question. Uh, yeah, definitely. So uh, here in Southeast Queensland, we tend to audit before wet season and after wet season um, so that we, 
we understand uh, and can get out there. So the pre-wet season, um, you can understand what's going on before and you can get the crews out there to, to, to fix the drains or whatever before wet season. Then post-wet season, you go out and see what the trails are like and then that, do your repairs to, to provide a good trail experience for the rest of the year. So yeah, definitely it's that repeatable. Um, so you get those repeatable results as you go on. Yeah. Okay. Great, we'll do one more question then. Um, Eric is wondering what makes your platform superior to the trail reporting feature in Trail Forks? So what might be the differences with, tra oh yeah, with yours? Uh, we capture a hell of a lot more data. Um, I guess ours, yeah, I guess the Trail Vision platform is really um, business focused, so business to business focused, or, or it, uh, whereas Trail Forks is more consumer focused. Uh, it's not saying that in the future, Trail Vision won't have that outward facing uh, where consumers can input uh, issues they see on the trail. Uh, where we use uh, trial vision is we have, I guess, we're using trained people to collect the data uh, and, and process that data. And then the reporting functionality, the analysis functionality uh, in the back end is, is, is really where, where trial vision steps it up above, um, above trial. Trial folks is great for, for collecting that, hey, there's an issue on this, this, this berm or whatever. Trial vision steps that up by, by um, putting multiple uh, layers of data on top of that, GPS location, and then it also has workflows in the back end to, to notify people of, of what's going on. And, and also, and Alan will go through this, but actually being able to push that issue to someone to go and fix. Does that answer the question? I think so, but of course you can follow up if there's any additional thoughts on that. Yeah. I'll go ahead and, uh, well, we have a lot more questions, but we'll get to this some more at the very end of um, Alan's presentation. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, Thanks very much, Craig, for running through that. Yeah, mate, I'm just trying to get out of my screen here. I can, can, okay. can, you, I'll, can you kick me out? Oh, I'm sharing go. now. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna run through uh, the the Trail Vision platform. So the platform comprises uh, an app and a web portal and running through reporting and audit uh, can be done in as simple as four steps. So step one, we're, we're actually going out in the field and collecting the data. Uh, we're then coming into the web portal where we can view that data, we can gain insights from the data and we can take action. So that actually uh, more, more often than not is going to be engaging our stakeholders. So generating reports and sending reports through to them. Um, and then it, if we've identified issues in our audits that require fixes, we can send those issues back to the app as a work order to be actioned. So as Craig showed before, um, these are the core trial management functions that we'll be looking at. Um, I'll be running you through the audit process uh, today, but it could be quite simply um, similar as the as constructed process. So ideally with our as constructed process, you're going through and, and capturing a trail when it's constructed. Uh, we're taking photographic evidence uh, of all the features. So every corner uh, or every segment of a trail uh, in, <laughs> in painstaking detail to make sure that we have a baseline model of what that trail looked like when it was constructed in its pristine condition. That way, when we're coming along down the track and we're performing our audit, we've got something to measure against. Uh, we call it a scope image that we can compare back and look uh, and, and we can get a good assessment of the damage or, or the severity of the incident that we're looking at. Uh, and then we'll cover off work orders. So how we can actually send that information back to the app uh, capture the rectification works and make sure that we've got a good log of that information. So step one, capturing data using the Trail Vision app. So before we go into the specifics of the app, um, I'll just point out that it works completely offline. So the only requirement is that we have to have signed into the app at, at some stage. You can't obviously go out into the middle of the desert where there's no data coverage and uh, <laughs> download the app. Uh, you, you've got to download the app online, log in to your account. And once you're logged in, the app will never log you out unless you, you manually log out. Uh, so then you're able to go out uh, into the field and capture data. We've got guys uh, who 
done audits uh, in the middle of very remote uh, parks in Australia. Uh, they've been done completely offline. And then when they come back into service after a few hours drive uh, back in the hotel, they can connect to the Wi-Fi and synchronize the app to the web portal. Um, very important for apps is making sure that they're as easy to use as possible. We don't want our app to be overly clunky or, or too detailed. Um, you shouldn't have to be a technologist to be able to use this app. Um, and especially when we're dealing uh, with outdoors trails people, uh, technology isn't always their best friend. So we've made sure that we've kept the app as simple and as intuitive as possible, uh, but also making sure that we can capture it uh, as much data as possible. Um, the app also works uh, on Android and iOS devices. So you can get the app from the Google Play Store and also the Apple App Store. At the moment though, we do not have a free version. Uh, we're hoping to come out with a free version uh, before we come to Reno for the International Trail Summit. Um, so, and, and specifically we'll be looking to help out uh, not-for-profits and registered charities with that. Uh, for now, uh, Trail Vision is targeted at uh, commercial builders uh, and land managers. So jumping into the app, uh, it's a very, very simple process. Um, we log in uh, or we sign up and create our account. Um, and then in that process of registering uh, our sign-in, all the information uh, from all the trails and all the organizations that we're linked to uh, is automatically downloaded. So if you're not linked to an organization, you simply click the organizations tab and request to join the organization. So in this way, we, we have our administrators uh, who are making sure that uh, we don't have um, un, unauthorized members coming on and submitting trail data because it's very important that we want to keep, keep good records. Okay, so creating an activity. Um, activity is our taxonomy for any activity that you're doing in the field. So you might be conducting an as-constructed audit. You might be conducting uh, an inspection on your trails. Um, that's all an activity. Uh, when you go through and you select the collector form, that will overwrite uh, the activity name. So if I had a selected an as-constructed audit here uh, or inspection, then it will change that title to be an as-constructed. So yeah, create activity, you're selecting the park. Um, if it is a brand new park or a brand new trail that you're building, uh, we've got tools for you to be able to add that in. Um, and then you're selecting your collector form. So in this case, we're doing Craig's um, Blue Sky Trail Standard Audit. Uh, and that goes through, we've got two types of data that we can capture here. We can capture a whole of activity form, which is basically, um, not pertaining to individual points, but the entire activity that we're doing. So for example, if we're going out in the field and we don't encounter any issues, how do we ensure that we're reporting back on that? We're gonna have a tick box that says we've, we've gone off, we've conducted our inspection, uh, we've got our trail tracking turned on, and we can say we've uncovered no issues. So our activity is still logged. Um, uh, we've, we've still got a breadcrumb of where we've walked, uh, even if we're not capturing any items themselves. So if we do identify um, some issues that need to be tracked, we simply click the add item button. That brings up three ways that you can add it. Uh, typically, you can, you'll wanna go straight through to the camera, take your photo. You would have seen on some slides uh, with Craig's that you, you can do annotations. So a picture says a thousand words, as they say. So you're able to annotate on the image um, and provide a bit more context of, of, of the issue prior to going through and filling out the form. So these forms are completely customized. Um, it's very important with the data as well to make sure that you, as Craig said, you know what you're looking for uh, and you're making sure that you're using the correct form to capture the correct information. Uh, and we'll go through on the web portal in a minute why that's important. So, once we've got our item, uh, we're not limited to one photo as well. We, we can add more photos. Um, so some people like to do a north, south, east, west elevation, for example. Uh, we can also go through and edit our form. So handy if we've made a typo or we'll see something that we missed and need to add more features. Okay, so once we've gone through um, our trail, we've captured all our information that we want to capture. 
Um, we simply click complete activity. Um, it's going to obviously confirm for you because the last thing that you want to do is complete an activity when you're not ready. This, this is the only part of the app that requires a data connection to work because obviously we can't upload data if we don't have an internet connection. So um, if you're out in the field, this button will be grayed out um, and it will tell you that you have no internet connection. As soon as you come back to a data coverage, uh, you'll be good to go. All right, so now we've collected our data in the field, let's have a look at it in the web portal. So here's our activities dashboard. So here you can see my synchronized activity. Uh, the idea of this dashboard is to give you a, uh, an easy way to see all your information at a glance. So you can see your total activities. Um, have you seen them or have you not seen them? So here you can see I haven't looked at this item. We've also got filtering. So you can filter by the asset lifecycle. I can have a look here at as constructed. I can have a look at audits if I want. And I can also filter the date range if I know a specific audit back in time that I'm looking for. On this drop down here as well, we also have export capabilities. So you have the ability to export a CSV file, uh, say a spreadsheet um, of all the point data that you've captured. You can also export KML files, uh, which, which you can import into other mappings. Okay, once I've clicked on my activity, I can see the specific detail that I've captured. So I've got my point on a map. I've got my collector form data that I've captured. I've got my GPS coordinates, as well as the accuracy of my GPS. I can see the image, uh, I can edit the image, and I can also add it to the work order. So obviously, if we're doing uh, a very large order on a long trail, we're gonna have um, hundreds of items here. So we have convenient filtering as well. So here's an exploded view of those items. Um, with the form, we can click to edit the form. Uh, that form is exactly the same as you would see on the app. Uh, some of our customers do like to have uh, some form fields that are filled out in the app, and then some form fields that are filled out back in the office. We can also add to a work order, which I'll go through in more detail, and our filtering can be done by the form fields themselves. So you can, for example, uh, search uh, for the feature type. So if I want to search for a, a berm or a particular jump uh, and, and see the results. Okay, here's our dashboard. It's all, all well and good to go collecting data in the field, but um, it's very important for land managers to not just see raw data, but actually gain insights. So data comes into our platform and it's analyzed to provide this information which the user can then interpret uh, to become wisdom. And wisdom can help you make better decisions in the organization. So uh, these key indicators in particular are very important because you've got to be able to communicate your wins, but you've also got to be able to make arguments for more resources. Uh, something, unfortunately, we need to do quite a lot in trails. One thing we're very passionate about in Trail Vision is making sure that we're capturing spend data and we're comparing that against the replacement value of our trails, but also the economic values of our trails. Economic value uh, is something that we work with economists to calculate. And we find that it's incredibly powerful for communicating back to stakeholders who perhaps aren't exactly trails people. Uh, it, it, all these charts, they're all designed to not just give you information on your trails, but, com but communicate that information back to people um, to make arguments that you need to make uh, or to communicate wins back to your team. So step three, we've captured our trail data. Um, typically, and we saw this before in the poll result, uh, it's a very tedious and painful process of piecing together lots of different applications. You might use a mapping app uh, to drop pins in the field, then you're using uh, your camera on your phone uh, to take photos. You might have a GPS app as well to, to make sure that you're getting more accurate data uh, on, on the location of each point. You might even have a notepad that you're um, scribbling notes down because it's easy and then tabbing through on your phone between different activities, uh, different applications. So we've made that a priority in trail vision that going and collecting data in the field 
should be where you're spending the time and generating a report in the portal should be as quick and simple as possible. So here you can see the activity reports page, um, which is very similar uh, to our activities page. It's all designed to be at a glance, um, see the information, be able to filter, be able to search, get in and get what you need. Creating a report. Hey, can I interrupt you real quick, Alan? So sorry. Sure. We have less than 10 minutes left and you have, uh, it looks like more than 10 slides still left and a couple polls. So I just want to uh, make sure, like I'm thinking we might go over 15 minutes just to answer some live Q&A if attendees did want to stay on. So just so attendees yeah, no are aware well, and the presenters. I'll, I'll run okay. Through. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. No worries. I'll, I'll keep I'll keep it brief given our time. Okay. So creating an activity report is as simple as clicking a button, uh, selecting the form that you wish to report on, and then you can select one or more activities. So if we're selecting multiple activities, we can uh, derive aggregate statistics. Uh, but obviously we need to make sure that we're in the same collector form uh, for filtering. So we also have report templates. This is where the power is. Um, all, all the reporting that you want um, pre-packaged into a template. So here's, here's a demo template that we have, for example. Um, it contains three items. It contains a text block where we can um, write a preamble, uh, a background information on the audit, perhaps um, highlight some critical problems. We have an automatically generated map of all our items, uh, including tracking data if we took it. And this is a detailed format as Craig was explaining. Um, so it's listing out all the form fields and the images. We also have um, executive style reports, uh, which, which put out a uh, photo collage, which is more based at not giving the detail of the forms, but instead giving a, a Cliff Notes version, uh, which the photos do a great job of, uh, and using the caption data that was captured in the app. Okay, so when we're adding uh, items to our report, we might want to say report on 200 issues that we've calculated on a field. We might just need to highlight the critical ones. So we can go through our collector form and we can say uh, search for high priority items, or in this case, I've gone uh, any items uh, that I've indicated were a burn uh, and, and put them into a particular section of the report. So again, a lot of power and capability here versus dragging and dropping things into Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Once we've finished our report, uh, we can also email it from the platform. The benefit of this is it keeps everything uh, nice in one location. Uh, so we can go back and see who was sent what report. We can also track it, um, which can create some pretty interesting situations where um, you call up a client and ask them what they thought of your report and they proceed to tell you it was fantastic. Uh, but you can see that they haven't clicked the link and haven't looked at it. Okay. The web report um, is how uh, we prefer to send out information. Obviously, we can also generate PDFs, but the web reports give a level of interactivity and engagement to the user. So this is an interactive map that they can click on. They can click on the photos, um, so they can click on the thumbnails. They can see the full size image. They can toggle whether they want the drawing on or off. Uh, and again, we've, we've got our detailed form here, um, but you know that, that's up to the template that you're using. Okay, lastly, and I'll just, um, I won't go through the detail, I'll, ju I'll just give a high level overview. Um, we've captured our items in the field. Uh, let's say, for example, that we've reported them to, to get budget to be able to do something about it. Now we're going to send it back. So you might remember in the activity page, uh, we had this um, add, add to work order field. So once we've added to work orders, um, it's like creating a brand new activity, this time in the web portal for going back out to the field. So within work order items, um, we can specify uh, our priority, we can type instructions, and we can assign it to a specific crew member. The photo that comes in off the audit is automatically put in as a scope image. So this goes back to the app and ensures that when it comes out to the guys in the field, they've got something to look at. They know uh, exactly where the location is, but they also have an insight into what you're asking them to do th through the photo, and especially if it's got any drawing annotations on it. 
So once it goes back out to the device, um, it shows up in the activities tab of the app. They can click that. They've got a work order form that they can fill out. So we can capture thing like hours worked or resources uh, used. They can also write comments back to the portal if they're having a problem. And the status is automatically changed as they're going through the process. So what we want them to do, we obviously want them to do the works per the instructions, and then we want them to capture image, so images as they're going along so we can document the evidence. So we suggest you need at least a completed photo, but we give you the option of a pre-start progress and completed. Um, so if you've got a large job, for example, you might take a photo at the start of the day. Uh, you might take progress photos if you need, for, for example, to show um, evidence of footings being put in correctly for concrete signs. Uh, and then we can have a completed photo. This can all be done offline um, and, and synced back online uh, when you have a data connection. So here we're back in the portal and you can see our status has been updated. Uh, we've got our completed photo that's come through and we have a log uh, of the user using uh, the app and, and receiving the data. So it helps us keep on track of it all. Notice we have the final say, we have the, the work order status and we have the device status. So it's up to us um, to decide whether or not we're satisfied that we can close out this item. Um, this is often very useful for when guys forget uh, to take completed photos. <laughs> you can send them a comment back or give them a call and say, uh, I need my completion photo uh, before I can complete it. Okay, so here's the statuses. Um, it, everything starts as new. Once it's new, it becomes available for device. As soon as someone logs into the app um, or, or loads their app, it's automatically downloaded to the device and that's updated in our status log. When the user clicks on it, um, so they open up the screen, that will automatically update the device um, status to opened. Um, then the user on the app has the option to change uh, to in progress, completed, problem, paused, and canceled. So those are very, very useful for reporting back to the dashboard and making it easy for you to keep on top of it. So yeah, that's, that's the run through. Um, we'll make the slides available for you as well, um, including this list of the key benefits. So just to give you a run through, what we wanna be doing is improving the visibility and oversight so we can make better decisions. We can communicate our trail management needs so we can save money. We can co coordinate our volunteer and our contractor activities. We can optimize our user experience and make life easier through seamless auditing and reporting capabilities. So thanks very much um, for attending the webinar. We'd love to take any questions you have now. Uh, feel free to visit our website and book a meeting with us where we can walk you through uh, an in-person demonstration. Also, please come see us at the International Trail Summer. Well, we'd love to see you there. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alan and Craig. And I really appreciate your time staying over for um, 15 minutes. We'll see what kind of questions come in, but there are definitely a handful of questions we can still answer. And again, if anyone um, is uh, has to run to another meeting, which definitely is going to happen, we are recording the webinar and I'll send the link to the recording within two days. Um, so you're not going to miss anything. Um, I did want to ask first Alan and uh, I meant more so I guess it would be a question for Alan maybe, but we do have two more polls that you had. Do you want me to share those? Um, oh, it was that's the one okay. We can go, go straight to questions. But, okay. Sounds great. Okay. Um, Lou asked a question that came in when you were presenting, Alan, just if you could further explain life cycle. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the, the concept of the trail uh, asset management life cycle is, is looking at how our trails progress from the planning stage through to the construction stage, going through to operations, then maintenance, and lastly, decommissioning. So what we're looking to do is make sure that we're capturing data across that entire life cycle of a trail network, um, reporting on it uh, appropriately at each stage as it's going along. So there, there's a full explanation of our, and the diagram on our website. Great. And I'm not sure if this is a follow-up question from Lou from that question he just asked about life cycle, but how many miles of trails would an organization need to manage before using this system? Uh, I'll throw that to you, Craig. 
Yeah, sort of a how long a how long's a piece of string. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean we've got we've got users that have relatively tr small trail networks where we're talking sort of thirty to forty kilometers of trail, but they're really high usage um, trail networks. So I mean, we have others with a are really long trail web networks, but but lower usage. So it really depends on how how detailed you want to get into your and how proactive you want to be about your, your trail. Uh, management. I guess that's probably the best way to order that question. I don't think there's any sort of um, a, a point in, in the, or a baseline level of uh, kilometres of trail or miles of trail before, before this uh, kicks in. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to the organisation's requirement. So most of our customers typically have a need uh, a legislative need as well to be documenting their auditing process and documenting their risk register and their, and showing actions on fixing that risk register. So that can be a not-for-profit, that can be a club operating on Crown land, um, and it can also be uh, a, a council or municipality themselves, um, right through to parks and wildlife services, forestry, um, needing to make sure that they're keeping abreast of uh, club club data and activity on that land. Yeah, that's a very good point that we sort of missed there. I'm picking up on Alan's there, that, that um, due diligence um, for, for trial auditing um, is really important. And we have a, a, mitiga a litigation mitigation report, if you like, for, for post events that um, you get out there and actually, if something does happen and someone hurts themselves on their trial, you have that data to, to be able to to prove that the trial was in a good condition and, and met the classification or whatever it was uh, at the time that incident occurred. Great. Um, David's asking if you can automatically target issues on different parts of the trail to different people or groups who are responsible for those portions, meaning, you know, can issues be distributed to a general audience and claimed by workers or volunteers who are able to address them? That, that's on our technology roadmap. So the, the short answer is not yet, uh, but it, it's absolutely coming. And when we say coming, it, it, it's coming in a matter of uh, weeks, uh, not years. Well, awesome. Uh, Dylan is asking, um, can you export collective data in other spatial formats, you know, KML, shapefile, et cetera? Yeah, he might have missed that. Yeah, very important. Uh, we have two uh, types of spatial data that we export currently. Uh, we, we export the points themselves, so the actual points that you collect along the trail. And then we also have a tracking feature. So you can turn tracking on and it'll drop a breadcrumb. So it, it, it'll follow you as you're walking or driving or riding through the trail that you're auditing. Uh, you can also export that um, data like uh, as a line string of, of points. Uh, Pamela is kind of responding to your the free version that you had mentioned. They yeah. are a nonprofit friends organization. How soon is that on, on the horizon that you'll have that available? We are hoping to have a not-for-profit uh, product ready to launch at your um, your international trail summit. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, that, In mid-April, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's something we're very passionate about. Um, in Australia, 95% of trails are maintained by volunteers. Um, so that, that's something we wanna make sure that we're supporting. Um, our, our business model is aimed at looking after the land managers, ensuring that they're collecting that data, looking after the builders who are performing the commercial works, uh, and then using that commercial capability to support the not-for-profit sector, the volunteers who are out um, managing the trail networks. Uh, Craig himself um, is, is very heavily involved with a, a local trail network in Brisbane here. And that, that's how he came up with the idea and the need for this platform uh, many, many years ago. Great. Um, we don't have any more attendee questions, but there was one that came in from a um, uh, an interested attendee who is in Nepal, um, and Pranil is asking, you know, does the digitized, tra digitized sorry, does the digitized trail auditing uh, cover all pertinent issues of trails like path quality, environmental characteristics, accommodation, risk factors, etc.? That's a fantastic question. Uh, the the answer is that the app, the web portal, it can capture any data that you want. 
So we, we have default forms, uh, which provide high level overviews that will be useful to any trail organization. But we also offer the capability to customize those forms and, and capture the specific organization data that you require. And, and so Great. with Craig, with his commercial auditing business, um, he will often have uh, new forms that he needs cr created from time to time based on specific audits that his clients request him to perform. Okay, uh, one more question, or maybe a couple, actually. I just, I just saw a few more coming from it, attendees. It. Ivory is asking, is Trail Vision compatible with Esri field maps? Okay, so the, the Trail Vision app, uh, you can almost see that as a direct replacement for using um, Collector uh, or, or 123 or any of those sorts of products. We're aiming to make it uh, a, a much more convenient and easier to use product than that. Um, we then uh, capture that data through to our portal and then we uh, give you the ability to export and we can also set up uh, API level integration uh, at the enterprise level to, to send that data back uh, into your Esri platform. We're not looking to replace Esri, we're looking to supplement and extend it because uh, our, our experience is that the Esri solutions are fantastic at, a, at an enterprise level, however, that there's no real specific outdoor recreational trail asset management platform. So that, that's the gap in the market that we're looking to service. Okay, great. Well, one more question and from Heidi, um, which agencies have begun to use this in the US? We, we've had a lot of inquiries. Um, so Heidi, we, we've literally just launched the product in the US. So uh, the answer is none as yet, but uh, we've been blown away by the interest uh, and looking forward to, to seeing everyone in April, uh, and also particularly uh, in, in Canada, a lot of interest has come out of there as well. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much, Alan and Craig, and I really appreciate the attendees who joined us today and your interest in this webinar topic. Um, so this um, slide that you see here, I will be sharing it with attendees in my follow-up email. Their names are linked to their email addresses. It has the Trail Vision um, website. Also, I will include the link to their um, PowerPoint presentation in a PDF format, so you'll have access to that as well, and it will also be noted on the website um, for, or the webinar page um, for this webinar. Um, and so I'll send that follow-up email within a couple days um, following today's webinar. And I also want to thank the additional partners again, um, including the main sponsor, Maine Recreational Trails Program Advisory Committee, as well as the Bureau of Land Management, the uh, Federal Highway Administration, the U.S. Forest Service, as well as the National Park Service. And um, if you are enjoying our webinars, um, please consider donating as little as $5 by texting I'm for Trails to 44321. Your donation will go to the Trail Capacity Fund, a grant program of uh, American Trails. Um, and we're hoping for the next round of applications to be available this fall. So please stay tuned for more details. And I will select a, a couple people who donated immediately following this webinar to receive our Trail Boss mug as a thank you. Um, and lastly, we hope you'll join us for these upcoming webinars. Notice on the, uh, noted on the slides. And um, we also encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash American Trails, where all of our recordings of our webinars, um, past and present, are, are noted on there. For, and it's available much sooner, within a couple hours versus a couple days. Um, so you're able to access the recordings at any time. And lastly, as Alan did mention, we invite you to join us in Reno, Nevada in April for the International Trail Summit that we're partnering with the Professional Trail Builders Association on. And you can register, become a sponsor or exhibitor today. So thank you again to everyone for attending. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and happy trails.